I recently read The Upside of Stress, Why Stress is Good for You and How to Get Good at It by Dr. Kelly McGonigal, who is a health psychologist and lecturer at Stanford University. The premise in McGonigal's book is simple, if a little controversial. Stress is not always a bad thing. In fact, if you can change your mindset about stress and embrace it, you might end up stronger, smarter, happier, and even inspire compassion and enhance your empathy. McGonigal shares, embracing stress is a radical act of self-trust. View yourself as capable and your body is a resource. You don't have to wait until you no longer have fear, stress, or anxiety to do what matters most. Stress doesn't have to be a sign to stop and give up on yourself. This kind of mindset shift is a catalyst, not a cure. It doesn't erase your suffering or make your problems disappear. But if you're willing to rethink your stress response, it may help you recognize your strengths and access your courage. If you don't believe me and you don't want to read the book, give McGonagall's 2013 TED Talk a watch. It's called How to Make Stress Your Friend, and at this time when I'm recording, it has 28 million views. So with this in the next video, I'm going to cover some exercises from McGonagall's The Upside of Stress that you can try when you're stressed out in the moment and you want to transform that stress into something meaningful. I can assure you up front that none of the exercises I'm sharing from McGonagall's book are the usual take a deep breath variety. McGonagall is presenting something new and exciting, and I think it's worth a shot. The first exercise in transforming stress is turning a threat into a challenge. McGonagall says, viewing the stress response as a resource can transform the physiology of fear into the biology of courage. It can turn a threat into a challenge and can help you do your best under pressure. When you notice physical signs of stress, for example, your heart is pounding, your palms are sweaty, etc., realize that this is your body's way of trying to give you more energy. If you have butterflies in your stomach, know they are a sign of meaning. Butterflies are your gut's way of saying, this matters. With this exercise, let yourself remember why this particular moment matters to you. Whatever the sensations of stress are, worry less about trying to make them go away and focus more on what you're going to do with the energy, strength, and drive that stress gives you. Instead of taking a deep breath to calm down, take a deep breath to sense the energy that is available to you. Then put that energy to use and ask yourself, what action can I take or what choice can I make that is consistent with my goal in this moment? The second exercise is simple enough. Help someone. I like the community teamwork feel of this one where we turn feelings of being overwhelmed into feelings of hope. McGonagall reminds us that sometimes we make the choice to be generous first and the uplift comes later. Especially when you're feeling like your own resources, whether time, energy, or otherwise, are scarce, choosing to be generous is a way of accessing the resilience that goes along with the tend and befriend response to stress. If you struggle with avoidance, self-doubt, or feeling overwhelmed, helping others is one of the most powerful motivation boosters you can find. The exercise is pretty simple. When you're feeling overwhelmed, look for a way to do something for someone else that goes beyond your daily responsibilities. Your brain might tell you that you don't have the time or the energy, but that is exactly why you should do it. By doing so, you prime your body and brain to take positive action and to experience courage, hope, and connection. McGonagall encourages us to be creative with how you exercise this generosity, saying, you can give others appreciation, your full attention, or even the benefit of the doubt. It's a small choice that can have unexpectedly large effects on how you experience stress. 